Um, my name is Catherine Orham Neal. And my name is Tim Orham. I was a part of the band and that was a big part of my life. Um, it was small back then and it was a lot of fun. I think we had three different band directors, um, but as a group we were very bonded and really had a lot of fun. I have more appreciation for the school as I've gotten older. Now it's, it's more of a legacy. Uh, both of my wife and I's sons attended Alamo Heights. I've got four or five grandchildren who live here in San Antonio. One is Harry B. Orham III. I'm hoping that at some point they end up going through Alamo Heights. But when I was young, it was just wanting to get out of school. But now it's, <laughs> it's the legacy that I'm proud of. Um, my dad was a great dad. He was a, a people person. He loved people and people loved him. He, uh, you know, he went to high school here. He went to elementary school here, which is hard for me to imagine him as a teenager running around. Um, and then ended up being my principal my freshman year in high school um, before he moved over to the administration building. And he was just um, a great dad and a great uh, member of the Alma Heights community. Yeah, he was an exceedingly humble person. You know, he grew up during the Great Depression, uh, moved here when he was 10. I'm kind of paraphrasing what I'm going to say today during my speech. Um, Alamo Heights became a real home for him. He, he loved the people. He loved the district. Um, this is for him is, is, and for the family is a great honor. My dad did a great job of separating his role um, in Alamo Heights from our home life. Um, one of the things that I really appreciate about him as he was my principal my freshman year, um, as a typical high school girl, teenage girl, I would come home and complain about some of my teachers. And he really didn't want me to think I had any power in that situation. Um, and he never said anything to the teachers as far as I'm concerned until after I graduated and then there were some changes made. And so he did a real good job of not letting me be big headed, knowing that um, he was an administrator at the school. Um, and, and I really appreciated that. A lot of the administrators that were with, with my father at the time uh, grew up with him being coaches. I knew them, we knew them from when we were very little. My, our dad ran the Alamo Heights pool for a long time and the coaches helped him run the pool and the guys that he liked from coaching PE checked in the baskets and did all of that. So unfortunately, the three times I required discipline, the coach would call three and say- Three times? Three times. <laughs> took me three times to figure out I couldn't skip out of school. They would call my father and say, well, we can suspend him or we can give him the paddle. Well, I never got suspended. <laughs> so he was able, to, my father was in administration when I was in school, but it was always across the street. He was never a, he wasn't assistant principal at junior high when I was there. He wasn't principal at the high school when I was here. So I avoided some of that. My sister did a much better job than I did. Oh, I loved Miss Thomas was my math teacher. Um, I had her from my sophomore, junior, and senior year. Before I had her, I didn't think I would enjoy math at all, and she convinced me to continue with it and was very even keeled. Um, funny story about her, when my dad hired her, she was living in Hawaii, and he had the time zones wrong and called her in the middle of the night at like three in the morning to offer her the position. Um, Alamo Heights. So that was, I really love Miss Thomas. And I also love Miss Franz, um, who, when I was 14, ended up taking me on a foreign study trip with a bunch of the high school juniors and seniors um, for six weeks in Europe. And then later, she was my teacher for government here in the high school. And we still stay in touch. Um, it's, it's some really special relationships with some of the Alamo Heights teachers. The ones I really remember were by geometry teacher Mr. Funk and Mr. Forster, who actually wrote the book that the entire state used for Trig. Um, he, I used to see him at the gym. I still, he just incredibly smart man, but a very, very nice man. I liked my chemistry teacher, Mr. Cobb. Mm -hmm. um, high school for me was a little bit further away than my sister, so my memory's not quite as good. <laughs> but those, I, I, those three teachers I really remember that I really liked. Okay. Uh, uh, hi, I'm Hoppy Price, the class of 1972, Alamo Heights High School. Well, I, I got a great education at Alamo Heights High School. I think it, it really had me well prepared for 
college because taking uh, advanced placement courses like calculus and physics and, uh, and organic chemistry uh, really kind of put me ahead my freshman year, so I didn't have to. Yeah, so a number of teachers at Alamo Heights uh, stood out to me. I mean, certainly Paul Forrester. Uh, he uh, uh, encouraged and inspired me in many ways. Uh, uh, Walter DeBill, uh, Mary Durham, English teacher, Andy Cobb, and, uh, and Linda Wise, who taught me how to type, because I had no idea how much typing I was going to be doing the rest of my life on computer keyboards. And, you know, I, I know people at work who hunt and peck, you know, they're looking for stuff. I don't even have to look at the keyboard, 60 words a minute. Thank you, Ms. Wise. <laughs> well, I really enjoyed being a part of the math team at Alamo Heights. And, and math is a sport, isn't it? So, you know, we got to go to uh, state contests, uh, uh, you know, in different cities. And, uh, you know, our math team did pretty well. We brought home some first place awards for a number of things. and. Uh, uh, I, I wrote a math paper with Alan Cost, and we did pretty well with that. That was very much inspired by Mr. Forrester. So, yeah, that was definitely one of the highlights of, of high school. I think my senior year, and that was one of the easier years, too. You know, junior year, I think, always seems to be the hardest. But uh, I had taken most of the courses I needed to graduate. But, uh, you know, I still was taking uh, some advanced placement courses. Uh, and so uh, it was a little bit more relaxing, and I had like two periods where I could just kind of do wherever I wanted to because I didn't have to take classes. We had sort of an independent study PE class that we put together where we just played football or did whatever we wanted. So uh, uh, that, was, that was fun. Uh, well, you know, I think Alamo Heights was a great school when I went there, and I walk around the halls now and see all the new buildings, and it just uh, it keeps getting better all the time. I'm just amazed at the, the rocketry class and uh, uh, you know the, the arts, uh, and, and I think the arts and athletics are very important, and uh, I, I see that Alamo Heights just continues to grow and get better. I'm Barbara Dreven. And I'm Alan Dreven. That's yours. The, uh, it's, it's real life, uh, as opposed to regurgitating stuff that you read in a book, and I was hoping that the students would get involved and the parents. We have great mentors that come in, and uh, it's an exciting program and to learn about the real world and discuss it at night as opposed to nothing happened at school. Uh, it's fun. It was wonderful. Yeah, yeah. It was easy, it was fun, it was wonderful people. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, the community in itself adds to the, the experience at Allen Whites. Wow. <laughs> It's already too late. I already had this wonderful four-year world here, and then I'm going off to college, hopefully, and it's another four-year wonderful world. So, lucky. It, uh, it's a happy time. It's an exciting time. It, it, the world is open to all the forms of ideas, and uh, don't limit yourself to uh, just a straight and narrow and uh, being myopic. Think about it in the whole. Thank you. Well, since, since I'm the foreigner, uh, a, north, a northerner from Dallas. Uh, it, it, this is a tight community, and uh, the warmth and, and uh, friendships that we endure that it, it have uh, is just wonderful. It's a great place to live. Uh, Jody Grant, class of 1956. I'm not sure why I'm being honored, but I'm, <laughs> but I'm delighted to be here, nonetheless. Well. Um, I started the first swimming team here. So in 1953, one of my classmates, Dan Peavy and I, rounded up a group of guys who we thought were pretty good swimmers and we went to the principal and we said, we want the last period off so we can travel downtown to the YMCA and swim. And they were uh, good enough and kind enough and had trust enough in us to let us do that. And that was the beginning of the Alma Heights swimming team. So um, I was a sophomore at the time. And by the time we were seniors, we were second in the state. Um, missed winning the state championship by one point, which, you know, that's the way it goes. We were happy to be there and had a wonderful time. So that was a, a great foundation. I went to SMU on a swimming scholarship and continued to do that in college. Awesome. So I spent more time doing that than studying. <laughs> I have a lot of memories. One is that the school has changed dramatically in terms of its physical 
appearance. It was, um, it wasn't air conditioned. That was a memory. And falling asleep in class was something that happened to a lot of people often because it was hot. But I, I loved it. You know, it was uh, a great foundation for me to, to learn and uh, to interact with other people. You know, the, the classmates I had were just really, really super people. We've remained friends through all these years. Uh, those who live in San Antonio meet monthly, believe it or not. And we've had, of course, regular high school class reunions. Well, find a great university that has a broad um, educational curriculum and you know test all the waters and hopefully by the time you graduate from college you'll have figured it out because once you graduate it's not too late but it's hard to go back and reclaim that education right. now just here's to our blue and gold uh marisol de luna class of 1985 uh definitively art from uh pre-k to k to elementary school to junior high to high school uh favorite teacher bar none uh, Carol Ackles, and in fact our foundation just named a uh, fine arts initiative after her. I think ironically, and I'm not kidding about this, my parents just showed me a, a newspaper article that states that I hated recognition, and so I didn't like to enter art contest, and yet I won one, and I had to do things like this. So I did art because I liked it, not because necessarily other people liked it. So that was a massive memory. But honestly, I had five art classes. So for me, in high school, I was able to do art unilaterally across whether it's spirit, athletics, theater, the hoof print. It, it, was, it was really cool. Yeah, it was, I was involved with everything. Ooh, find a mentor. I mean, if you think that you have an aptitude for something and you don't know what it is, find someone that believes in you that can give you some guidance. Yeah, absolutely. Well, when I got the call that I was being initiated, I thought, my God, this school has, has produced so many extraordinary people, it's gotta be a prank. So I'd say that this school for a public school is extraordinary and has been since my mom went to school here, since I went to school here, since my nieces and nephews went to school here, fantastic, yep.